Yes, there's nothing better. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Project E. Today, we're doing one of my favorite things. We just started, we're fishing water wheel. That's what I call it here in Oklahoma. Uh, it's this green grass that you got in the back. You know, this stuff's everywhere. Some people call it river grass, but I call it water willow. I love fishing it. Fish hold in it, I think, year around. There's some different ways to catch them. Today, I'm gonna try swimming a jig. I'm gonna show you maybe one other bait that's uh, uh, really good in it, you know, if I need to show you another bait. But follow along, this is gonna be a lot of fun, I hope. I just love fishing this shallow grass. So I've had, I've caught the one, I've had two other, I felt like really big ones, just come up and half-heartedly eat it. So I'm making the adjustment. I am gonna tie a heavier one on to where I can move it that much faster. One thing I have noticed, all three bites this morning have been waking this, this swim jig. You know, that's something to keep in mind. You know, the bait, swim jig's effective, you can swim it down deep, you can swim it you know, shallow, but you can also, it's a top water bait, one that you can just really get across the top of the water. And so far, all three bites this morning have been with that bait, making a V, making a wake. When I'm picking this grass apart, there's, there's things that, that I look for that, that I think are key little spots. You know, anytime I've got a little bit of a mat like that, or possibly right here where the grass is laid over, I think that's a key spot. And make multiple casts on any little point that you have that sticks out just a little bit further, those can be key spots. When I'm swimming a jig in grass, I wanna use braid. I just think that's critical. I use 50 pound braid. I always use an eight three to one gear ratio reel. Now, if I'm swimming a jig in open water, say on boat docks, lay downs, something like that, I'm gonna use 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon. Keep that in mind. I, I, I like that fluorocarbon in that open water situation. Uh, I just like how it feels and I don't think I pull it away from so many fish, but I gotta have that braid in this weeds because a lot of bites are on a very long cast. In those open water situations, my cast is a lot shorter that's why I can use that fluorocarbon. In this situation, a lot of my bites are a long ways away in some thick cover. I need that braid. You know, you're, you're at the lake and you're wondering, man, where do I start? All the grass looks the same. You can never ever go wrong if you got a bird sitting in the grass somewhere. That's a great place to start. That bird is up there eating shad and bluegill, the same things that bass are eating. Start there. That's, that's a great thing, just a great place to start that'll give you a lot of confidence. Cool, doggy. That's a big one. Did you get that on film? That was a big one. Golly, that's fun. Dang, gum it. Holy, oh, what hit the boat? Oh my goodness, that was a fun bite. Man, we have gone a long ways to catch one, and we finally got us one. Look at that one. Man, he ate it good, too. Oh, that's why I love this so much. You know, I've switched over to a swim bait, because they just wouldn't eat that jig. I don't know if it's pressure or what, but still, it's, you gotta have a bait that's gonna be up in the water column. So I went over to a swim bait, and uh, man, he annihilated it. That's what's so much fun. I had to jump, I had to have, because of that bite. Golly, that was fun. Thank you, girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome, awesome, yes. That's why I like it so much. They just kaboosh, they eat it. I was beginning to wonder, you know, prior to getting that last bite, is it just too windy? I think a lot of times 
when the grass is moving this much and you got this much wind, the bass has a hard time finding your bait. But, you know, I got that bite right in the direct wind. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes from here. Good and dead gum it. I don't know that I've ever had that happen before. That fish blew up on it, and I just let the, the swim bait go back down in the water, and that big old girl hate it. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Alright, man, that's a good one. Check it out. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Skinny. Skinny, skinny. All right, we're starting to put it together a little bit. That's two bites more in the scattered, in the scattered, you know, water willow. So, you know, both of them been on points. Kind of interesting, when you look at this fish, it's got like rubbing marks. I don't know if that's from rubbing on the, on the grass in there, but awesome job. Man, that's fun. Yes, 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 yes. Fucking head, see you later, girl. <laughs> That's kind of new for me. I've, you know, I just, my boat was on top of the location. I just dropped the swim bait back down in there and didn't get a bite. And I dropped it back down in there a little bit deeper and all of a sudden it was swimming off. So that kind of tells me, uh, I don't know. I, I, the water's dark. I got a cloudy day. I feel like it might be better conditions if it was a little calmer, a little sunnier. But uh, we're going to keep going along. I'm having fun. We're starting to get this thing figured out. You know, I've never been on this lake before. Uh, but I know there's some good ones in here. So let's keep going. Gosh almighty, that's a big one. Holy smoke, stay on there, fish. Come on, baby. Stay on there, please. Come out of there. Come out of there. Holy smokes, it's a giant. Oh, that was such a cool bite. It gives me goosebumps in 90 degree weather. Oh, it's not as big as I thought it was, but man, I thought it was like an eight, nine pounder. It's still a dead gum good one. Man, that's what I love about just using a swim jig, you know. The bite is just so ferocious. You know, all the bites today, I've had that bait within the top few inches of the surface, so it's just like a topwater strike and they come out to kill it. I mean, just annihilate it. Man, that's fun. I love it. What a beautiful fish. Thank you, girl. Oh, man. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that'll keep you coming back for more. I promise you, I promise you. Right there, so that fish came out of that mat. I made the cast. The cast was, let me just, that's kind of the first one that I've had out of a mat. The cast was right there, and that fish came right there to get it. Hmm, interesting. Today, I, you know, I, I started out with this jig. You know, it's a little quarter ounce jig. The wind was blowing. The first few bites I had was, you know, up on the surface. So I went bigger, I went to a 3 8 then I went to a half ounce jig, and I didn't get any more bites. So I came back to that, to that lighter jig, and uh, you know, that's just something that I experiment with. You know, that may be something you need to experiment with too, because there's times that, you know, you can't get a bite on that light jig and, and, a, and a big half ounce jig where you can really wind it in faster, uh, I'll get you more bites. So just keep that in mind, the weight of your jig is gonna be by experiment, you know, if, if you're getting snagged up a bunch, uh, then go a little bit lighter. If it's not getting down in that grass, go a little heavier. So uh, that's, that's the only thing I know to tell you on what size jig to use. The fish kind of got to tell you in the conditions. It's really important when you're swimming a jig to figure out how deep in the water column the fish want it. Uh, there's times that they want it down, you know, six inches, eight inches, even a foot. Uh, then today, they want it right on the surface. I mean, waking it, almost like a topwater. So experiment with that, and that's going to play back into what size jig you need. 
uh, to keep it in that zone that they're wanting on that given day. If I had my choice, I would always like to throw into the wind, um, not necessarily for current or anything like that, but all the, all, the, all the water willows are laying this way so I can bring my jig through them a lot easier. Uh, you can't always do that, but uh, if I can, I'd like to throw into the wind and bring it with the wind. I just seem to be able to keep my, my jig in the water better further back in there. I know we're kind of back in a pocket right here where it's a lot calmer, but today it's gassing. It's 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, and, and in reality, it's probably not the best thing for grass like this. One, it's moving, and, and the problem with that is with it moving and my jig moving coming through the water, I don't think bass can hone in on it. Thus, why I've had so many fish boil and miss it and uh, not get it, because the grass is all the time moving, they can't find my jig, you know, it's just a louder environment for them. And, uh, you know, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. You know, maybe something that I should have done different today is, is flip some more, you know, just slow down and flip. But you guys following along, you know it's not in my nature to, to, to go real slow. So if I can cover water, I'm always gonna do that first. You know, a mistake that I make a lot when I'm swimming grass like this is it's just in my nature to get up on it and make a cast down that outside edge. That's good, but it's not always the best. I think you get a lot more, you can get a lot more bites. If you get off of it a little bit and pitch it back in there, you're gonna see little lanes that's gonna open up and you're, you're gonna get more bites because a lot of those fish, especially on a hot summer day in July, they're back in there a little further. So. You need to experiment with it. If you can get away with just throwing down that outside edge and getting bites, by all means, go do it. But if you're not getting bit, back off of it and throw into it at a 90. You're gonna see all kinds of little lanes and, and opportunities and presentations that gets your bait that much closer to that bass when their strike zone's smaller like it is here in July. One thing about fishing water willows that, that I'm not scared to do is turn back around and go back down a productive stretch the other direction. It just opens up a whole new angle and lanes that you didn't see going the other direction. So when you find that stretch, turn right back around and go the other way and you can pick up a few more fish. The great thing about this grass, it's found in a lot of ponds, you know, a lot of city lakes, you know, it's, it's in a bunch of farm ponds out where I live. And, you know, you can fish it from the bank really simple with a swim jig. A swim jig's super, you know, weedless. You know, heck, I, I wade out in this stuff, you know, back at the house, you know, just because it just grows around the bank and you can wade out through there and, and catch fish and actually be a whole lot more efficient than a boat, you know, if you are fishing from the bank. Today, it hasn't been a factor at all, but on a day when it's calm, you know, a, a bass will give itself away up in this water wheel. As you'll see that stuff just move ever so slightly. You bet your bottom dollar you need to throw right there next to wherever you see those water wheels move on a calm day because I've caught a lot, a lot of bass, you know, when they give themselves away just by noticing when these things move just a little bit. So here's my setup. I got a seven foot three heavy action carbon light rod, eight three to one gear ratio reel, 50 pound braid, a uh, little three eighths ounce swim jig, a crazy legs uh, chigger crawl. I just really like that. Um, as far as colors when, when choosing a swim jig, you know, you're, you're trying to replicate a bluegill, a shad or a crawdad. You know, this time of year with those bluegill, you know, up here spawning in July, you know, I'm gonna try to represent a bluegill. Uh, thus with these colors with the blue and the yellow in there and a little bit of orange. Uh, sometimes of the year, you know, shad, shad spawn, you know, you want a white one, but uh, you know, don't get too elaborate on your colors. If the water's a little darker, go with black and blue. But um, you know, the main thing to remember with the swim jig is figure out what depth they want it, what speed they want it, and uh, then try to keep doing that. I'm gonna get back after it. I'm one of those guys, when I'm throwing a swim jig, I'm a shaker. I'm gonna shake that rod as much as I can all the way in. I wanna make those legs quiver, uh, make that bait act like it's escaping. But 
You know, there's a lot of guys in, in the deep south that, man, they throw that thing out there and they just wind it in. Uh, that's not me. I just, I've never caught them that way. But, you know, for you guys, experiment with it. Let me know what you think. You know, are you a shaker or are you a winder? But I'm a shaker. I like to make it quiver. That's just what's always worked for me. I, I really get it going and try to make that thing quiver up on top of the water like that. That's so fun. I just, that will never, ever, ever in my life get old. <laughs> that's why I shake it. Get in the boat, that's a bigger one than I thought. Gosh almighty, that's fun. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Oh, man. That is swimming a jig in a nutshell. You know, I know I caught a couple other fish on a swim bait today. Um, I like that swim bait, you know, when, when there's a lot of pressure on a body of water or if the water gets a little clear, it's a little softer presentation than that swim jig. I feel like, I don't feel like a lot of people do that swim bait deal, but that's why you do it. Just strikes like that. It's just an awesome strike. I just like it. It's just, oh, it's just, it's fun. Thanks guys for following along. Subscribe, hit that like button, give me some comments. And uh, man, I, I, uh, I'm enjoying doing this and uh, appreciate you guys following along. I'm gonna catch another one.